So the early warning signals we have of what we are in for is in that log of disasters that are occurring in every community around the world. Because of drought, we cannot grow the crops that we used to. And the same thing in terms of fisheries, the decline in fishery uh, populations and so on. So those are our early warnings. We've already had those. We didn't pay a lot of attention because we're not always, some of us don't experience the disaster, some of us are not farmers, some of us are not fishermen. But the next round of warnings are different. The next round of warnings are not going to let any of us. So if we fail, we're going to fail to have potable water in the amounts that we need. We're going to fail to have the ability to grow crops and food in the way that we have become accustomed. We're going to have the problem of being able to live in our cities when they are becoming heat islands and we are really having great difficulty uh, with just ordinary daily life. Those are the things that are coming next in the next generation of problems as a result of this climate crisis. I think that some of Korea's position in Asia sometimes is uh, worrisome to others, but you have both the story that's positive and the story that's not so positive. Uh, I am stressing the positive. We didn't ourselves know the potential until we began working with cities, including Seoul. I know this uh, originally sounds uh, uh, odd, okay, but if you think about it, there are two main uses of, of surfaces in a city, roads and buildings, and of human activity, okay? The advantage that we have today is we can use very precise, detailed data that comes from drones that can tell us what the heights of all our buildings are, what the widths of our buildings are, what is on that building, what is being shaded on that building, and as a result, we can found a very precise estimate of the surface area on roofs that is ready for solar use. If you look at those buildings, Seoul City has the ability to actually generate electricity even though you don't use shaded areas, you don't use older roofs, you don't use roofs that are oriented in the wrong direction to, to maximize solar generation, which is only then leaving you about 30% of the roof area of the city. With that 30%, the city of Seoul would be able to surplus of electricity during the summer hours of roughly 10 a.m. to 2 or 3 p.m. in the afternoon. That surplus could be put into the grid for uses in other communities uh, and that sort of thing. We didn't expect that answer, okay? Now, it is a big project to do uh, that 30%, but you could get started with public buildings, with our schools, with our hospital campuses, with our libraries. In that way, begin a pilot program to learn. Each dong and at each gu level, you could learn how fast, what are the problems, what are the permitting issues, what are the industry issues, okay, to make that happen. It doesn't make sense to go to each apartment in the 20-story building and asking how much are you willing to pay for uh, and that sort of thing, because then it's going to be very costly. You're asking, we wouldn't do it if we were building a fossil fuel plant. We wouldn't say, you have to buy your own fossil fuel plant in order to have electricity <laughs> in that apartment, right? We wouldn't do that, okay? And we shouldn't do that in the case of uh, wind and of solar. But you need to create community scale rather than simply asking each individual to look in their checking account and see if they can buy their own solar system or their own wind system. That will go too slow and it will be too expensive. The reason I say that, in the United States and 20 nations in Europe, the fastest growing sources of new electricity supply are wind and solar. Has been that way for the last 10 years, okay? Why? Because it's cheaper than using the remaining coal, which is low heat coal, doesn't perform well, it's inefficient, in addition to whatever its power, it's, and it has substantial 
pollution characteristics, but it's just inefficient way to produce electricity now compared to solar and wind, okay? And that's why you see coal declining, natural gas declining in order to, they just can't compete in the market. They are businesses and they insist on making profit in order to provide electricity to their businesses and to their populace, their clients, okay? For 10 years, they've been buying new solar and new wind, and they've been retiring without replacement fossil fuel plants. So it's not a romantic story, it's not idealistic story, it's economic story that it is cheaper to the utilities. What do we have to do in order to reduce those very expensive disaster-related costs in the next 10 or 15 years? What do we have to do? I suggest as rear view mirror thinking. Our future, when we drive our car, our future, the destination we're heading toward is not in the rear view mirror. That's where we have been. That uh, rear view mirror thinking is the paradigm problem and the paradigm shift is that we look actually forward this way and plan our energy and our economic system to be able to achieve that. What do we have to do going forward that will allow our communities to live in a more equitable economic system than what we have now and put our efforts on finding those solutions? no longer have the chance to spread this over the next 100 years, we have the chance to spread it over the next 10 years. We do know how to do this. It's just a matter of, again, the political system and the policy sector doing better. But you still need an inspiring set of voices that can give you, um, in a clear way, what it means to have hope about how we can make change and how we can. And her name is Amanda Gorman, and I would urge everyone to take, uh, go to YouTube and look at Earthrise and listen to her inspiring, motivating basis for us all to take this matter seriously and to act. There is no rehearsal. The time is now, now. She says, there is no rehearsal. Now that we're only up to 10 years, there is no rehearsal to solve this problem. We have 10 years. We don't know how to do something in a coordinated way uh, in those 10 years. The time to act is now, now, 